So this video is all about loops and if statements. And maybe you've seen them before, but I encourage you to still watch this video. Because although you might have done basic stuff with them before, there's lots of different ways to use loops and there's a lot of subtleties to if statements and booleans in Python. And I encourage you to watch this and pick up on a few tricks because I will be using these tricks in future videos. Anyways, enjoy. Okay, okay, so now we'll cover for loops. Um, I would say that there's five main ways of looping in Python. Of course, there is more or less, but for this video, think of five ways and try to master all five. Uh, there's the regular root loop and it's written like this. Now, what does this mean for I in range five? It's gonna go I equals zero, I equals one, and there's gonna be a statement in here such as like print I. So it's gonna run this print I and it's gonna do it for I is zero, one, two, three, four, but it's not the top element. So if it's five, it goes up to four. So you know that it, I starts at zero, it goes print zero, then I goes up to one, print one, two, three, four. So you're in incrementing your index like that. That would be a regular uh, loop. Of course, you can use regular loops for many purposes. You don't just like print elements. For example, if I had an empty list here that I define at the beginning, and I want to append to this list the squares of the first, uh, say, if I want the first 20 numbers, I have to go up to 21. Remember, one higher than the max element. And I would go, for example, um, list.append. Let's say I actually want i cubed, the first um, cubes of the first 20 numbers. And then I can look at list, and it will have appended the cubes of all these numbers. So one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, all the way up to 20 cubed. Remember 21, even though I go up to 20. Regular loop. List loop, that's if I have a list that looks like, uh, you know, say I have uh, dog, well, fog, cat, and horse. And I can loop through the items on my list. So for item in list, print item. So with this loop, I uh, incremented my index to get higher and higher. And, but for this one, I have a list and I increment through the items of that list and I print the item. And so that's pretty straightforward. It's just written like this and you can do things with lists and this is really common. Uh, an enumeration loop, uh, it's a combination of the first and the second. Suppose I have this list here and I go for I item. So I wanna get the index and the item so that each time in the loop, I could use each one. Uh, and then I have to use enumerate list, right? So it enumerates my list. So it passes both the index and the item at the location. And I could print something like print uh, index blank contains blank. I'm gonna use the string thing that I've done before, right? Dot um, format, right? And there's two blank things here. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna append my index, which is I and my item, which is item. And then it says index zero contains fog, index one contains cat, horse, right? That's exactly what you'd expect. Again, do play around with this yourself, get used to this. There's a list comprehension loop. Um, that's where I can say list is equal to i cubed for i in range 21. This does exactly the same as this, right? You see what we did here? This is a regular loop. This is gonna do the exact same thing that was done in one. But it, so it's going to say, okay, there's a list I want to define and it's going to put one cubed, two cubed, three cubed for I from zero to 21. So I can go like this and I'll get my list. So this is an easier way of doing that as opposed to doing it the first way. So that's pretty basic. And then finally, there's a double for loop. This is again, something you need to get used to. So that's where you put a loop inside a loop. So I could go for I in range five for j in range five. So it's gonna do the loop through i, but it's gonna loop through j within i. And then I could say print, um, I'll go like this. I'll say i equals blank, j equals blank dot format i j. Remember I'm putting two things in because I have two things here. And you'll see how the loop works. i equals zero is the outer thing. So it's i zero and then j increments up. Then I goes to one because we're in the second thing of the loop. And then J once again, increments up zero, one, two, three, four. So that's how a double for loop works. So now I'm going to cover Booleans and if statements. These are extremely important things that have to do with numerical programming, especially. So what are Booleans? Well, Booleans can take on the value true or false. So here are two variables, A and B. 
And with Boolean values, we can do logic, right? Formal logic. So I can say A or B, right? And that'll say, check to see if A is true or B is true. Well, one of them is true, so it will return true. A and B, however, will return false because it requires both of them to be true, but one of them is false. But I can also invert things. For example, not B will invert it so that it's false and it goes to true. And I can say A and not B. Well, now it's true and this returns true, so it's true. So that's how you manipulate these uh, Boolean values, right? And I can put these in what are known as if statements. So I can say if A print yes, right? And so it checks, is this true? Well, it is true, right? So it will print yes. And if I put B here, B is false, so it will not execute, right? So that's the very basics of this sort of thing. Um, now, I can also put two things at once, for example. I can say if um, A or B print yes, right? Remember that A or B? returns true. I can even store this in a variable called C and C will be true. So C takes the result of that and stores it in a variable. So A or B is itself a Boolean. You take a bool two Booleans, you plug them in and it spits out a Boolean, A or B. So A or B, which is true, yes. A and B, however, will print false because one of them is false, but A and not B will work. So that's the basics of Booleans. But where do Booleans actually come from when you're coding? Well, usually it comes from if you're checking if a variable is equal to something. So I'm going to set i equal to zero, right? i is zero. And I can say i equals equals zero. That e two equal signs mean check to see if it's equal to this value. And it's true because i is equal to zero, right? So this is a, a value. But I can say i equals equals one, it will return false because it's not equal to that value. And I can actually store this in a variable, which I'll call a. And I print A and it's false, right? Because this is not true. So it, it, it I equals equals zero gets converted to a Boolean and then I can do stuff with it, right? And so I could do stuff in if statements with this. I can say if I equals equals zero, print yes. And sure enough, it will print yes. I can also check if I is not equal to something with an exclamation mark. If I is not equal to one, print yes. So it's not equal to one here. But if I was equal to one, it would not execute. So that exclamation mark equals means check if it's not equal to this value. So it's a slightly uh, different operator there. I could check two things at once in a similar way, right? I could say, so i is one and j equals zero. I can say if i is not equal to one or j equals equals zero, print yes, right? And because j is equal to zero, right? I, I is equal to one, so this is false, but this is true, so it returns yes. So I can chain things together like that, right? Um, now, the other way that Booleans will arise up is if I'm checking things with uh, substrings. So for example, suppose I have this substring and I wanna check if at is in cat, right? This returns true. And like before, it takes two strings and it maps them to a Boolean. So I can store this result in another variable called a. And a returns the true. It says that this, all this information is true. So this is a, and again, I can combine these in if statements. If at in cat, uh, print yes. So at is in cat, and sure enough, it prints yes. But if I tried if dt in cat, it would not print yes, right? Now, with Booleans, you can link together things. There's elif and there's else, and you have to know how to use each one. So first of all, I could say if dt in cat, print yes, else, print no. So it's, it checks if this is true. It says, if this is true, then execute this code. But if, if it's not true, otherwise else print no. That's how it works. If I put if at and cat, it would print yes, but it would not execute this else because this was true. Now, um, suppose I wanna check if at is in cat and I can say i equals zero or i equals equals one, right? Well, one of the, this isn't true, but this is true. So it will go through, right? And suppose I want to check both, right? So both of them are not true, right? At is in cat, but I is equal to zero, not one. Then I could go elif and I can check specific things. So I can say elif um, uh, at is in cat. I can say print only condition one true. And sure enough, it will try this. It'll say, well, 
this is true, but this is not true. So this is false. So else, check if add is in cat. And add is in cat, so it will print this and then it won't execute this else, right? But if I put DT in cat, then both are false here. This returns false and it'll go all the way to the else like that. So it'll say only condition one is true. And that's if elephant F, elephant else. Finally, um, something about positive numbers in Python. So first of all, zero, print yes. You can put integers in these uh, if statements. Uh, zero will always return false. So it will never run this code. Zero is equivalent to false in an if statement and positive numbers are equivalent to true. Any positive number is true in Python, right? So that's a summary of if statements and Booleans.